It's David here from One Up Gaming. This is going to be a quick one. It's going to be slightly different. It's going to change the format up slightly. And welcome to the One Up Gaming podcast, episode three hundred and one. So before we go into the seriousness of this episode, um, I'd just like to say thank you so much to John John Hare, um, former Sensible Software. So Sensible Soccer. Cannon fodder, megalomania, all the old classics on the C64, um, the Amiga, and Mega Drive for me mainly. Sense of World of Soccer, and then branching off into his newer sort of stuff. So he's got Social Soccer out for Apple Arcade, and the game will be a fast paced arcade action football soccer game. And I've played it and it seems really nice. I had it on the iPad and I loved it. There was a little bug on the the MacBook sort of version, which I couldn't enjoy. But overall, it's fast, fluid, smooth. Plays well, the passes snap where you want it to go. And it's a nice sort of like afternoon killer. You know, it's just, there's nothing fancy or amazing it just kills a bit of time plays really nicely and i guess in these so-called budget sort of releases that is what you need you don't need the fifa experience of the camera panning down and looking at all the stadiums and all the kits and all the sponsors and all that you just need someone to pick up 20 minute quick blast for your mates and then go get pissed um so again thank you john if you are interested to hear some of his history, some of the stories, I love talking to John. It just goes on. I love it. Um, last week's podcast, episode 300, is still available on the YouTube channel, still available on the iTunes. So just search One Up Gaming and have a look for episode 300. So moving into this week's show, um, episode 301 of the One Up Gaming podcast, I will just mention, but I'm not going to push... We are still sponsored by Games Inspired Music. It's an album. It's available to stream, to buy. Just Google it. It'll come up. I'm not going into the details. Uh, I I have to just mention the fact that uh, my mental health of the last, I'd say, year has been pretty much terrible. Really bad. And... I mean, where do you start? If if anyone listens to this and has anything that they hear, that they can see any warning signs, anything, please go see your doctor, go online, go onto the NHS website, the mental health, go to mind.org.uk, any of these sort of sites, um, NHS, just www.nhs.uk slash mental um it's not slash, is it? Is it? It's not hyphen. Is it hyphen? Hyphen health. And go on there. Um, have a chat to someone, and you need to talk. You, I've been bottling this up for a good year, and it's got to the top of me. It's just beating me down over the last few months. And I mean, I'll just explain some of the crap that's been going on. Um, I've been at the same job, which I love. I absolutely love for four and a half years. I started off um, never working in care ever before and then got this job. So I thank you to the company for giving me the job, to having the trust and confidence in me as a person. A year into the job, <clears throat> I proved myself adequate at the role and they offered me the senior um, sort of position, so I took that. So for the last couple of years, three years, I've been a, a senior of the team and... My manager, who I love to bits, is amazing. Um, he was always there for me, always there to have a quick chat, always there to have a bit of a joke, a bit of a giggle. And and then things started to slowly happen at work where management sort of other managers were coming in, external managers were looking in on the site to try and make changes to like there was big changes that didn't need to be done. Um, there was training that, yes, people need to be trained, but there was ways to do it and ways to go about it. 
Um, I just feel that some of the big managers came in and tried to emphasise how bad the place was run, even though we were... It's dealing with people, working with people with autism, mental health, all this sort of stuff, PD, it's a very hard job to do. And yes, we had a lot of staff turnover, but at the end of the day, a lot of staff don't come in to be assaulted on an almost daily basis. A lot of people come in thinking, oh, isn't that sweet? Isn't that cute? We'll go out into the shops. We'll go get a coffee. We'll come back, watch some movies, do some bits and bobs. But a lot of the people that I work with at the place where I work don't do that. They are so highly artistic. They are so set in their routine. If you deviate slightly from that routine, then they can't handle that change. And then you will get assaulted. You need staff there to help, deal with the situation, sort everything out, start again. And don't get me wrong. I've loved the job. I've loved doing the stuff. But there was job opportunities available and it seemed as though certain members of staff were looked over, almost as if like deliberately looked over. Um, I've requested for the last two years to be put through my level five training, to be put through management training. Nothing's been done. Uh, that got me down, but I still just buckled down, did my job. And it must have been just six months ago now some deputy manager roles got put up. So I applied and I got an email back, which was the exact same email as like four or five other people got, which is like, you don't have the qualifications, you don't have the experience. And that was basically it. And my manager didn't like that. And he went to head office, contacted them, had words, had chats. And then all of a sudden, We got told that if you've been a senior for more than a year, then you're allowed to apply with an interview. So people did. And I went along, did my interview. It probably wasn't a great interview. Uh, I'm crap at interviews. As I say, I've been feeling shit recently. And then the added pressure of all that. But... I can knuckle down, I can get the job done. I know what the job entails, I know what the job is. I've basically been doing a very similar job to what they're asking as a senior because we didn't have a deputy manager on the package, so I was doing a lot of that work. And then I got a phone call off the manager from a different site, like the area manager sort of thing, and he basically sort of said that you didn't get the job. I was like, yeah, I know. And he said the feedback was that you don't know the service user and I believe you're dangerous with him. So those sort of words, like I'm dangerous. And that's when it just hit me. It's like, this company just doesn't want me there anymore. And I'm not going to lie. Ever since that, I've gone in. I've done the bare minimum. I've not really interacted with staff, not really talked to people. Um, I've just gone in, done the job, come home, and it's getting to the point where I just dread getting up and going in, and it just scares me that I've never felt this way about a job before. It really does. And then to th- make things even worse, just about that sort of time, my girlfriend at the time. And decided that she was leaving and she moved away. And it's like, it was a very much of a massive shock. And I know deep down that things weren't right. Things weren't going well. But you try and convince yourself that, oh, it's just a phase. Oh, it's just this. It's just that. It's, we'll get through this and all that. So even though deep down it was like things weren't working, it's still a massive shock that they just upped and went And now I'm in the position of last month, I couldn't afford my phone bill. And that was because she left that quickly 
I'd already bought her birthday present, which was like a ticket to all expensive paid to Paris for the weekend. And yes, it was only £500, but still, £500 is a lot of money. I sort of rang the thing and the basic sort of said, because it's such short notice that they can't give me my money back, can't get a refund on that. So that was annoying. And then I got a, a letter from the the police uh, last month. And bearing in mind, I've been driving for like 20 years. I've never had a ticket. I've never had a caution, never had anything. And then I got a letter saying that I was driving somewhere in Sheffield. And I was like, it was a 30 mile hour zone. I was doing 38, which yes, my fault. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. And I admitted to that. First of all, they said, because I hadn't, so I said who was, who was driving and all of this, they were basically going to give me 12 points. And I believe if you get 12 points, it's your license gone and a fine. But I said, if you own up to it, um, they'll be more lenient. So I said, it was me driving and I'm sorry that I was doing 38. I didn't realize I was where the actual zone was and everything. Cause I'm not from Sheffield. It's first, first sort of few times I've been there and they sent a letter back just a few weeks ago, well, about a week ago, saying that I've got three points on my licence and a fine of £220. So again, this month, I've paid that. So it's another month where I won't be able to probably pay my phone bill. Um, money is crap at the minute. I've also got to pay like the rent and everything because like, when she was here, it was like she paid the rent and I paid the other bills. Um, but now that that's gone, it's like another £500 a month that I've got to find. I can't deal with going in to pick up extra shifts at work. It's just a no-go. I'd end up doing something stupid. Um, so that all happened. And then a week ago, I went for a job interview. And the feedback that they gave me was, you seem really down. Um, you might need to go get, you might need to go talk to someone, that kind of thing. And I was like, ah, oh, crap. I guess it's if I can't even pretend to be happy anymore, I've got a massive dilemma now. So just a couple of days ago, I rang my GP, spoke to someone on the phone. And just this morning, so Wednesday morning when I'm recording this bit of the show, one of the doctors rang me back, spoke to me, and he basically just sort of said, look, I'll give you a three-week sick note just so you can... Don't have to worry about work, don't have to worry about driving, don't have to worry about anything, just see how you feel after a few weeks, and then we'll go from there. If you need to talk to someone, we're here, but at the minute, we'll just give you a sick note so you don't have to worry about going into work and having the added stress, pressure, anxiety of going into work where I just don't feel like they want me there and at the minute I just don't want to be there. So this whole section of the podcast was me just saying if you need help, speak to someone. Email us, contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. I can talk shit about anything. Um, Tweet us at official. Um, so again, um, those websites were, uh, www.mind.org.uk and www.nhs.uk slash mental hyphen health. They should be up on the screen now. Um, so we're just going to have a quick break and we'll come back with just the games that I've been playing this week. So... It's been me, David, not feeling myself, sending it out there for you guys who I know suffer in silence. You don't have to. There is people out there that we can talk to. There's people out there that we can get help.
Hi, still me, David from One Up Gaming, episode 301. This intro is a little bit more upbeat than the last one. <laughs> it's amazing how well we are as humans at faking our emotions, at pretending everything's fine. It's not. Listen back to the first half or get seek help if you need it. But so the I'll just go through some of the games I've been playing this week. And that is the first one, Trek to Yomi. And I remember seeing the trailers for this and it looked stunning. Absolutely drop dead stunning. And playing the game, the story seemed okay. The graphical style was amazing. The movement was okay. But the, the fighting, you're supposed to be a samurai warrior. It was just very stale. And there's been games built years ago that had a better fighting mechanic sort of system than this game. So unfortunately, I wasn't that impressed. So we'll carry on with the trailer and then... The next game, Ash of God's Redemption. Now this is a game, it's a weird one. I think I got it sent to review years ago. And I saw it on the Xbox Live thing. I think I used to play on the PlayStation 4, but then I got the Xbox Series X. And I saw it, I thought it was only a couple of quid, so I bought it again. The intro sequence is stunningly brilliantly beautiful gorgeous anime sort of no style and then the game itself no one is ready. it's like a top down strategy sort of like turn based strategy sort of game like the XCOM where you control your little characters and move them on the squares that you can move and fight and that but it's also got loads of bits in the, the game where you have a lot of talking, a lot of talking, a lot of reading, and I didn't like. The gameplay wasn't great. The game wasn't great, but I loved the intro. I loved the start of the game. It seemed really fun. Next game that I played was B Simulator, and I do love these games that are called Simulator. And I think all you need to be to be a simulator is. Absolutely over the top, absurd physics and just an off the wall, completely stupid premise. And that is what this game is. I don't know how they started the game, but it's it's a 3D behind the character flying game. So like the newer versions of the... Um, all I can think of is F Zero, but it's not. Star Fox, Star Wing, Lilac Wars, those sort of games. But the newer ones, where it's much more an open world 3D flyer game. And it looks basic. And I wasn't impressed. I really wasn't impressed. It, it, it's a bad game. I wouldn't buy it. It seems as though that they've made the game and. They've got like really kiddie, cartoony, talky voices and, and I was just like, no, nah, tapping out of this one, I'm done. I am so done. The controls weren't great, it weren't well thought out, it just was bad. Quick game that I played, and that is K.O. the Kangaroo. And we will be doing a quick review of this one soon. Just have to get a few more levels in, a few more bits in. And... This is a reimagining, reboot, remake of the like the series, because there was two or three sort of games in the series. There was, I think, there was uh, Dreamcast, there was PlayStation Two, and I think there was some Game Boy Color Advance sort of games. And it's your basic open world 3D platformer, but more of the 3D platformer style of a Crash Bandicoot where. 
it's yes there is sections of hubs where you can walk around the full level but the majority of it is walking straight along to the platform to the places and it just follows the path but i like that you know where you do you know where you're going and what you're doing the graphics are nice nothing special but they are really nice sound effects are really quite nice and i enjoyed the game it's a fun little game it's a nice throwback to the old 2000s sort of era of games where they're just fun to play you know there's nothing too complicated nothing too hard just fun little games the next game lonely mountains downhill and this one it looks very virtual racing style graphics flat shaded polygonal sort of graphics very boxy very bold colors and it's like a top-down sort of view game of you on your BMX bike having to go down a, a mountain. And it is such a fun little game. I really enjoyed it. Controls are amazing. The skidding, the brakes, the animations, the deaths, all that. Pure gold. Reminds me very much of like the Trials HD. But you got a bit more movement, a bit more freedom. So I would easily recommend that. Next game of my, next game of mine. The next game that I played was This War of Mine Final Cut. It has been a long road. And this one, it looks brilliant. I love how this game looks. It's stunning. Completely, utterly stunning. And it kind of reminds me of like a zombie apocalypse sort of thing, but I think it's meant to be like a, like there's been wars or something and you're living in a house with some friends and each night you need to go out and explore the neighborhood and try and get resources back into your camp in the hope that when you get back they haven't been burgled and robbed yourself and I just love the premise the graphical style was nice the animations really top-notch and I was hooked. And then I got to the point where it's like, oh, it's just, do you know when you just sort of like, it's either give yourself to the game to get into the game more, to actually find out more of the nuances of the, the systems, the actions and things. Or you think, it's great, I'll just tap out now and I'll always have a really good memory of this game. Whereas I'm not going to try and get into it too much and then think, hmm. But yeah, so that is the This War of Mine, amazing little game, I do recommend it. Next up, The Inner World, The Last Wind Monk. Now, I didn't know what this is, I just downloaded it. And playing the game, it's an old, old, old school point and click puzzle game. In the mold of like the the original like Monkey Islands and Salmon Max and all that sort of stuff, it looks nice. It plays okay. The puzzles I couldn't work out. It was just complete randomly press things on random things, see what happens. The voice acting was nice. The graphics are nice. The humour is completely out of it. And if you love point and click games, you might get something out of this. I unfortunately didn't, I just didn't connect with the puzzle mechanics and how to solve the puzzles. And that's, that's a, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you like puzzle games of like uh, point and clicks, then you might get it. Again, please download, listen, watch the Podcast 300 with the special guest, John Hare. That's available everywhere. If I'm intelligent, I might put a link above my head. If I don't have a clue what I'm doing, which is probably what will happen, it'll be in the the notes at the bottom. It'll be in the description. That's the words. And again, we're still... I mean, last week, I think I missed the Game Guru Max series. 
and the Ridge Racer 6 series. Ridge Racer 6 is back up this week. I've just been listening to the first part of the podcast. I've just been not myself and just not willing to do anything. It's been quite depressing, to be honest. But that is everything that I've been playing. Um, so please go to our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk. Please visit the Patreon site, which is patreon.com slash O-U-G. On our home site, which is oneupgaming.co.uk, the top right-hand side of the screen, there's an option where you can go on, you can buy T-shirts and things. We've got our limited edition 300th podcast with John Hare and Sensible Soccer logos on. Um, Games Made Music is available now. 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity, so that's a great charity. Please help us to help them. And again, our first 100 podcasts are available at audiobooksontape.com and one pound of each sale will go to the Diabetes UK. Um, Please Find us on Facebook, YouTube, subscribe to us. I think we've got 1,200 subscribers now. Uh, we're on Twitch, uh, which is twitch.tv slash OUG official. Twitter, it's at OUG official. And you can email us at contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. So it's been me, David, from One Up Gaming, saying thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you do need help, it is out there. Please find help. You don't need to suffer alone. It's a a rough world out there. And with COVID, with all these other things happening, pay rise is not not going up with inflation, with the cost of living. It's, It's a crap place to be at the minute. And if you're not in the right frame of mind, that makes it a thousand times worse. So if you do need help, please speak to someone. It's been me, David. Thank you. I bang with one of gaming. Drop more hits once I'm famous. The best, that's what our aim is. All platforms, what your game is. To the leader boys are coming. See me in a shooter, I can promise I'll be gunning. When I hit the music, try to swim, I'm gonna run it. Can't take one up, you can try, but we done it. Let's go. Alright, let's go. To the best place for reviews, I know. Xbox One and PS4, we you as far as consoles go. They do handheld PCs, merchandise for you and me. Contest that you gotta do. The prizes are for gamers who. <laughs> Going hard all day. We believe the boys, cause you just that great. Can't lose as much as take your certified badass when you play. I bang with one up gaming. I bang with one up gaming. I bang with one up gaming. Drop more hits once I'm famous. The best that's what our aim is.